Hi folks, Thomas Henson here with thomashenson.com and today is another episode of Big Data, Big Questions. And so today's question comes in from a user. So if you have a question, find me on Twitter or you know put it in the comment section here below. You know, Send me an email. There's a ton of different ways to get in touch and have your question answered on the next episode of Big Data, Big Questions. So today's comes in from Bobby and it says, can you let me know which career path is better between data scientist or data engineers, which we've talked about, but this one is for a person suffering with anxiety or difficulty giving presentations. So thank you for your question, Bobby, and I totally understand where you're coming from as far as you know having challenges that you're trying to deal with, uh, you know, and trying to pick out a career path, right? Like, hey, we want to play two things that we're going to be successful at and things that we're going to be able to excel in. Right. And so you're looking for that career path. So I'll say, you know, just right off the bat, kind of, you know, a couple things stuck out, to, stuck out to me about it. And I'm going to get to those as we kind of talk about why I think, you know, presentations and, you know, kind of getting, stepping outside your comfort level are some options for you, but let's answer your question first before we dive into, you know, Thomas's thoughts on some of that. So I think, you know, depending on which way you want to go, it's not going to matter, right? Like, I think it's going to be more about if you're more technical as far as wanting to be code and hands-on and, you know, building out clusters, maybe starting to play with Kubernetes, Linux, those types of uh, systems, then being on the data engineer side is going to be a good way to go. Or if you're more math-based and want to get into, you know, the specifics of, hey, you know, some of these features or some of these, you know, pieces of data may be able to give us better insights into what we're trying to solve, then the data science path is going to be there. So don't let, you know, your anxiety or your difficulty giving presentations say that I must go data engineer or I must go data science because I think they're both equal to give you the opportunity to not have to not have to present and not have to have as much interaction as, you know, you would maybe in a different role where it's more you know, customer facing and, you know, job driven. So kind of, you know, my thought process about how much you're going to have to deal with in that situation is, you know, I've worked with people who never, you know, they, they never had to present, right? Like when we we're in that role, that just wasn't their thing. They may be at the meetings, right? Like, you know, they'll be at the meetings, but they're not the point person. Maybe, maybe get a one-off question or something like that. But most of that's, you know, in the confines of their team. So you know, you're still going to have team interaction, but there's still a ton of downtime where it's like, hey, headphones on, just, you know, kind of banging out your own code or, you know, doing your deployments and stuff like that. So there's not a lot of ton of interaction there. You may, you know, may have some, you know, user interaction that you're kind of working through depending on where you are in the stage of your project. But for the most part, I, I don't think, you know, even, I mean, you know, even outside of the questions here, you know, most of your customer interactions, a lot of times, maybe not so much on the data science side, but it's not, it's going to be nothing like you would think from a web development perspective or a front end developer, right? So uh, still engaging with the users, but more in a team atmosphere. So um, feel free to choose any of those paths, right? It, to, to be able to deal with, you know, your anxiety and difficulty given those presentations. I think you'll be totally fine. And I think you can get away with never having to give a presentation if that's kind of in your boat. But I think you should. I think you should try to work towards um, conquering, you know, those difficulties in those presentations. And I'm not saying that you start off, you know, going out and being like, you know what, I'm going to try to go to a conference and give a keynote. And I'm going to go try to go to a conference and give a breakout session. That's not what I'm saying. I think you should start a little bit smaller and, you know, just on your team. And then like, if you find a new, you know, if you find a new feature, a new software tool, or just a new process that you like doing, you know, present that to your team. And I know, I know it's, I know it's tough and I know it's hard because, you know, they even did a study a while back about, you know, like the number one fear. Most people said that they feared public speaking more than they feared death. Let me say that again. They feared death less than they feared public speaking. So most people would rather die than the new public speaking. And so um, definitely, I mean, it's something that, you know, I've been working on for quite a few years. And I'll be honest, like, you know, I... I get, I get nervous each time. Like I get nervous, start talking to people, you know, I'm like, Oh, you know, I'm about to go on. Doesn't matter. I mean, it doesn't matter to the fact that maybe I've given a certain presentation 25 times, right? Heck, every time I turn the camera on and there's nobody in this room here on big data, big questions, I still get nervous too. So, you know, there's, there, there's going to be some amount of nervousness and I understand that, you know, it's, it, there's varying levels too, right? Like I'm not, 
I'm not looking over it and saying that, hey, you know, everybody, you know, everybody can be able to do that. But I do think that you can work towards it. And so maybe everybody's not going to be able to do it on the same pace is maybe what I'm what I mean to say. But I think it's something you should try to because presenting is going to open up doors for your career. It's going to make you feel feel good, too. Like each, each time I talked about how nervous I was, like I just I just spoke in front of over a thousand people for the first time in my life. Like, <laughs> like that was huge. I didn't but I didn't start out that way all in one day. But I'll tell you, I was super nervous and it was just for a short amount of time, but I was nervous the whole time leading up to it. And then, but then afterwards, after you get it, it's like, yes, you know, you, you get that amazing feeling that, you know, you, you've done something, you know, I don't, I don't know if you're into sports or something like that, but you feel like you've won. Like, even though, you know, even though, who knows? I mean, you know, it's the first time speaking to that many people. I'll probably hopefully have that opportunity again and I'll be better at it next time. So it probably wasn't my best time if you're, you know, if you're looking at it. But, you know, it's something that, you know, you start to work for. So you'll be interesting how much networking and how many doors are open by doing that. And it's all about giving back to the community as well. So to recap, I don't think that you have to, you know, choose data science or choose data engineer to be able to not have to present and do some of the other things. However, I think most people, and if you're watching this channel and you're, you're, you're really curious about career development, I do think that everybody should have some kind of presentation skills and something they should practice towards. And I totally understand, you know, there's, there's a lot of anxiety whenever you're doing something like that. But, you know, if, if it's something that you can work towards and you can conquer, then um, I think it's going to be something that's going to be amazing. One, for the community, because we need more voices. And then two, it's going to be something that you're going to be proud of and you're going to be able to work on. And it's just another challenge too. So but that's all I have today for Big Data, Big Questions. Uh, make sure that you hit the subscribe and ring that bell so you never miss another episode of Big Data.